Media at McGill is a hub of research, scholarship, and public outreach on issues and controversies in media, technology, and culture. Visit us online at media.mcgill.ca. Within the countries that they're operating in, uh, I'd be very interested to know. Thank well, you. the information is that they are, that they hire public relations very high, uh, highly paid public relations operators to do some of their PR business for them. And these people are the main link with uh, journalists. This actually, I think this has been, this has been reported um, even in the U.S. media. And by the way, this is nothing new. I mean, it happens all the time, and especially in times of war, whatever, whatever the country fighting the war, it tries to provide its own gloss on why it's fighting the war, regardless of which side it is. So the fact that it's happening now, it doesn't surprise me, because this is not something new. What is new is the lack, as I said, of an, you know, investigative journalism to provide the alternative view. That's the problem. I don't know whether how many of you saw that, in fact, a Canadian documentary, a very excellent Canadian documentary called The Control Room, uh, which was made, uh, which covered the Iraq war by sitting in Qatar and observing how Al what Al Jazeera were doing. Uh, and it was actually a very interesting reflection on how journalists should be covering that war. And one of the most telling images in that documentary was that when Baghdad fell, the, they filmed the Western journalists sitting in the, their control room watching this and they all stood up and cheered. That was very revealing to me uh, and that indicated the extent of the problem because if they, I mean leaving aside the fact that they were so partisan that you know even that you can understand but the fact that they thought it was now over, mission accomplished, that is what was revealing. It's one of the most intelligent people from the pro-West side was the Marine officer who was the public relations officer for the US Marines who actually as the documentary progressed began to admit on television that things were not going well. And of course he was dealt with. The minute the documentary was shown, he lost his job. Currently he's working for English language Al Jazeera. These firms are private. Can you confirm? There's uh, a big queue behind quick you. Quick follow-up. These are private firms and can you name the firms, the PR firms that are working in Iraq for the American government? Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Are they private firms? They are Western private firms. firms the no, no, government. they are private firms. The PR firms are private firms, yeah. I mean, you now even have private firms fighting wars like Blackwater. So PR is hardly a problem from that. Like about that. Okay. Um, it's a question. Uh, it, you mentioned uh, Democracy Now! There's also alternativeradio.org, which you've done interviews on. Uh, a lot more of the alternative and good media is shifting towards the internet. But as we saw with uh, MySpace, YouTube, and soon to be Facebook joining the five corporations that control all the media in the United States, uh, is there a certain fear that the internet is going to be privatized as badly as the print media and the standard media, especially with the Bush administration, what it tried to do last year with telecoms controlling websites? Or is there a better chance of resistance before everything becomes uh, under control of very few corporations? Thank you. Well, what you said is very important. Uh, people are very worried about the internet and the uses of the internet, not just the Bush administration, which uh, goes without saying, but various governments. I mean, the Chinese government has controls on the internet because ferocious debates break out on it, which can't be appear in any Chinese newspaper. The Burmese government, uh, more or less put a control on what could go on the internet because it was being used by democracy activists in Burma to talk to each other. So this is a big problem and I'm you know, not a great technical person on these things but I know that the generation which is attuned to this will find ways of breaking it. You have sort of the most amazing hackers around in the world and if they can break into the Pentagon, which they've done, on more than one occasion, they will find ways of communicating with each other. So you will probably need to create alternative internet networks as well, which are sort of semi-clandestine if that happens. 
Um, you talked about uh, things getting better and talk, mentioned uh, the 1.5 million Americans who hit the Guardian website, but my impression is that Fox News, largely considered the most right-wing news corporation in the United States, is still the most watched. That Bill O'Reilly, largely considered the most right-wing commentator in the United States, has three million viewers. Um, and that with regard to the current presidential campaigns in the US, uh, for the Democrats, Hillary Clinton, largely considered the most right-wing Democrat running, is in the lead. And for the Republicans, Fred Thompson, who perhaps represents a new low, a kind of Reagan-era illusory America of everything's fine, we can keep things going the way we have, has pulled ahead there. And I'm just wondering, do you think that as far as the mainstream is concerned, things are actually getting worse and not better? Well, in the United States, this is true. I mean, politically, uh, despite the fact that the Democrats were elected and got majorities in the Senate and the House as a result of the anti-war surge in the country, they've responded very badly to this surge, which is why if the Democrats win, and it's still a big if, if they win, I mean, the Republicans are trying to help them as best they can by not having a candidate so far, a serious candidate, which means that the Democrats probably will win. But uh, if they do win and carry on in the same old way, as I argued earlier, then you could see interesting developments in U.S. politics. The United States is the country I visit probably the most often. And you find now critical awareness amongst sectors of the population which are not traditionally progressive even. People are very fed up. If you see the response to Moore's latest movie, Sicko, uh, there's a fantastic article which appeared in some, you know, metro newspaper on the reaction in Texas to people who'd watched it, that real rednecks came out and said, the guy's right, our government's been taking us for a right. So there, there is that anger. And if the, economic, if the economy carries on like this, being heavily dependent on debt, then I think uh, you could begin to see some attempts to do something uh, 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 differently. Fox News, look, we know what it is. I mean, it's awful, and lots of people watch it, but that does... Most people, despite watching Fox News, are still anti-war. That's the thing. They watch it, they don't believe everything they see on it. They watch it because it's slick. Uh, you know, it's sometimes people, lots of people go and see horror movies. Uh, <laughs> Because they just enjoy them. It doesn't mean that they believe everything they see in a horror movie. And Fox News is a bit like that. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, let's speed it up a bit because people are leaving and getting impatient. And I hate ending meetings with half the audience left. So it's, it's, it's up to you, so do speed it up a bit. There's a long queue there. If you just ask a question, it would help. Hi, Professor. Um, I'm just wondering what kind of advice you have for the modern journalism student, because you clearly brought up some excellent criticisms about the North American media. And I'm just wondering if you had a single piece of advice you could give to someone studying journalism at the moment, what would that be? Uh, <clears throat> well, the advice I would give to people getting into <clears throat> journalism is do what you want to do. Uh, think straight, challenge. Uh, the only problem is that if they accept my advice, they might not have a job for too long. Uh, and that, I promise you, is a problem. I'm not kidding now, totally. You know, it is a problem for people. Uh, I know so many young journalists who work for, you know, the BBC, newspapers, who hate what they do. That's another development which has taken place and privately will come and apologize to you and say it's just a job. And that's the dangerous side that has happened that young people, because they need to work and earn money, uh, have of necessity become quite cynical. And there's nothing, you know, you can't sort of offer prescriptions to deal with that. It's quite a deep structural problem. Um, you spoke about the state of reportage in general in the Western media, specifically in North America and, and Europe. I'm just wondering, what's the quality of reportage as a, on the various conflicts that you talked about in emerging superpowers and democracies like India, China, and, and Brazil? Well, <clears throat> India, China, and Brazil you are very three very different countries. In Brazil...